So it was June 2012. It's just a few days after my birthday. I was at the sport club having dinner and I decided last minute I wanted to check out Versailles. I was at home in my PJs, ready to turn in for the night, watch a good chick flick, and my bestie Amin calls. She wants to go out. She wants me to meet one of her friends at this club I've never been to called Versailles on King Street. So I get dolled up, we go out, I meet her at the club outside, and we wait in line forever. So when we got inside, I was just people watching and Amin and her friend were talking. And then all of a sudden her friend Faraz says, I'm gonna play matchmaker tonight for you, Asha. And I'm like, I'm good. But then he disappears. And I'm like, I hope he's not taking this game too far. I was just listening to some music and, and hanging out near the bar. Some random guy comes up to me, taps me on the shoulder and he goes, I want to introduce you to somebody. I'm like, who's this guy? But, you know, it was already one o'clock. I'm like, what's the worst that could happen? And I'm wondering, is he taking this game too far? And then all of a sudden, what do I know? Ryan walks up to me and we get introduced. And I'm like, who is this tall, dark and handsome man? I can't lie. So we say hello and we start up a conversation and it was just uncanny how many similarities there were. We grew up in the same area, we had mutual friends, and in fact, we were both invited to a party that weekend, so who knows, we would, may have met then. I, but it just seemed to be everything, all the pieces were in place, we were in the right place at the right time to meet. I thought Ash, it was hot. I thought it was great. You know, it was. A, I think she was the first person I spoke to that night and, uh, and, you know, it just carried the night away. The conversation flowed so naturally that the house lights came on and we were still talking. Well, it was at the end of the night, I was walking to my car and, and uh, she was walking as well and uh, I decided at the last minute to ask, ask for a number. Three days. He took three days to call. Just wanted to play it cool. You know, he didn't want to call this the next day, make myself look desperate. It took Ryan a week to ask me out. Although we talked on the phone almost every day and we talked for hours at a time. So I was really excited to go out with him. I was trying to make a good first impression, so I decided to pick her up in my convertible at her condo. So I was anticipating our first date and he came to pick me up at my condo, and like a true gentleman, he walked around. I came out, opened the door for her. I was impressed. We went to Milestones, and it was a really, really good time. We were out on the patio, we had a great dinner, great conversation, and in fact, we didn't want it to end. Well, I thought I was on the hot seat, like I was on 60 Minutes or something, just question after question after question after question, and I, <laughs> I thought if I could get through that, I could get through anything. I, dro I dropped her home and I decided to go in for the kiss to end off the night. And we had our first kiss. I wait to find your hand in mine. So we were dating for about a year and then I was offered an anchor position in Windsor with CBC News. That was a pretty hard conversation to have because we really liked each other and it was hard to say no to that type of opportunity. So we decided that we would do the long distance for a little bit. I, I thought it sucked, but at the same time, I didn't want Asha to miss out on a good opportunity to advance her career. So I told her to, to take, take the opportunity. So I was in Windsor and I would drive up every other weekend, do the long road trip to see him. He would take the train from Union Station after work on a Friday meet me in Windsor, and that's what we did for two years. It was brutal. It was five, five hours on, by train and three and a half hours by driving with a heavy foot. And while it was really hard and, and tough and definitely challenging, we had a lot of fun. Well, most of the time we were in Detroit. We spent most of the time going to, uh, going to Detroit, some of the jazz places down there and, and some of the food spots. But after that two-year mark, or just leading up to the two-year mark, I think we both 
thought that, you know what, it's time that we should be in the same city. So I started looking for jobs and opportunities closer to Toronto. I, I, I hated it. it. It started to get to me, especially after the second year. And, you know, we're trying our, our best to see ways in which we can actually make uh, this relationship shorter in terms from a, from a distance standpoint. And honestly, it was such a blessing to get an opportunity back at CBC News, at the headquarters, and to be able to move back and, and just, you know, move on to that next step and start our lives together. I was jacked, I was excited about it. No more long Friday nights going, going to Windsor. And, and uh, I thought, you know, it would have been an opportunity for us to take our relationship to, to the next level. It was Christmas Day 2015. I knew Asha was working that day, again, on Christmas Day. And I decided that, you know, I decided to drive up to Richmond Hill and, and to go see uh, Asha's dad and ask uh, Asha's dad if, if he would give him the permission to uh, ask Asha for, for a hand in marriage. So it's somewhat of a tradition for me to read the hourly headline news every Christmas. So that's what I did, early wake up time, and I drove into work that day. Drove down from Richmond Hill all the way down to, uh, to CBC downtown and said, you know, why don't we go grab coffee somewhere? Um, and uh, brought her to Casa Loma. The maker think there's a coffee shop at Casa Loma. There's no coffee shop at Casa Loma. Let's go for coffee. But I wasn't sure what was open, where we were gonna go. He suggested Casa Loma. I was wearing my annual Christmas sweater and yes, it was ugly. So he takes me to Casa Loma and everything is closed. So I'm thinking, how are we gonna have coffee here? Like what's going on? I knew something was up at that point, just wasn't sure exactly what. So we start walking around the grounds and he's talking to me about New Year's resolutions and asking me if I had any. And I'm thinking, we haven't even got through Christmas, calm down. Anyway, I started talking about, you know, wanting to budget more, get fit, all these superficial goals. And then he looks at me and says, well, what about us? I said, I want to get engaged. <laughs> Little did I know that was about to happen. So then he starts talking to me about all this deep stuff, meaningful words coming out of his mouth. And I'm like, what is he saying? Well, I was trying to like, I was trying to set this whole thing up, right? Like I was like, what am I going to do with it? We had all these, there's all these joggers running up and down the scene. I'm trying to time it because people are coming by me and this and that. Then I wanted to, you know, talk about the castle and what it represents and, uh, so started asking her questions about, look at this castle, look, look at it. What does it, what does it mean to you? What, what do you think it represents and this and that? And, you know, she kind of told me a little bit what it represented to her. And after I got into what it represents, what it represented to me and, and talking about the strength and foundation of the castle and, and how it's like a fortress, how it represents something that could not be broken and it could be tested. and. At, at times of adversity or challenges around it. And, you know, despite all the changes that has happened in the city and the growth and all that, it's still the same, it still remains the same. And, and that's what this relationship really, really meant to me. And then he got down on one knee and he proposed to me and I couldn't believe it. So, you know, I was teary eyed, I said yes and people took photos of us and it was really just a magical moment. I can't wait to have a family. Mini me's and little Ryan's running around. <laughs> <laughs> and I just want to strengthen and see our relationship build and the love and happiness, continued success, many blessings and putting God first always. You? Same thing, just just building on on a family that's that's built on God and built on strength and, and building a legacy that can last forever. Mm -hmm.